Salutations, Serene Eminence here. Welcome to my Tiziana Terenzi's Andromeda Extra de Parfum Extensive Explication and Astrological Olfactory Profiling Overview. So this is my second video in tandem with the Scent Bird application, where in which the first brand that I reviewed was Balenciaga and that was the Flora Botanica scent. Today, of course, I shall be reviewing Tiziana Terenzi's Andromeda. And towards the second part of the video, I shall be going over various scent signatures that align with astrological zodiac signs. So that's an interesting twist on my scent bird videos. I am sipping a bit of Flore Sauvignon Blanc and this was a part of the trio of white wines as well as the sextet of rosés that I reviewed in tandem with Macy's Wine Shop. So I shall link that in either corner of the video for your reference and review. I did mix it with a bit of grapefruit extract just to enliven the underlying effervescence or the lack thereof just to heighten the experience a bit so as far as the shipping duration it was about a 10-day turnaround from the actual processing of payment but a seven day shipping turnaround as far as actual delivery so on january the 16th i did receive email correspondence indicating that my payment had been processed for the month and my uh, parfum was in the process of being packaged on january the 20th i received an email regarding the fact that my parfum had been shipped and then on January 27th, I received an email stating that my perfume had been delivered. So I would say that's fairly reasonable in terms of shipping. Now let's get a little bit deeper into the actual perfume itself. So the retail price for the perfume, a full size bottle, is $350. I only paid $26.95 for a 0 0.27 ounce vial and that's supposedly supposed to last you about 30 days based upon the amount of sprays. However, I like to be completely doused and encapsulated in the essence itself so 30 days does not relate to me. It doesn't equate to me because I use a lot of the fragrance because I like to just feel like I am the fragrance. You know what I mean? So, in essence, to break down the $26.95, the $16.95 is the flat rate fee for the monthly subscription. Um, and then the $10 fee tacked on is the part of the premium plan. So, if you select a premium scent, in tandem with Saks Fifth Avenue select fragrances and brands there will be an extra either five ten or fifteen dollar add-on fee but I haven't seen any fifteen dollar add-ons I've mainly seen only ten dollar add-ons so you're looking at around twenty six ninety five to try the actual scent out I do have a link however for you to receive half off of your first purchase if you were to subscribe with the scent bird <clears throat> application so you would pay under ten dollars and i do also have a link for you to receive a free fragrance and i also receive a free fragrance if you sign up via the referral link that i have linked in the bio below so the Saks fifth select has a total of i believe 11 brands and 30 cents to choose from And these brands include such as Creed, Sicily, Petty, Aqua, De Parma, Amouage, Honor Woman, and Goutal, Paris, Nuit et Confidences. I chose those two as examples because I really liked the bottles. 
Um, I love a great aesthetic display and I also really liked the actual scent notation. So I will link a picture up for the Amouage and the Goutal Paris for your reference just to see what um, you may be able to access on the site because you can't gain access to everything on the site unless you subscribe. So I'm just giving you an insider look into the Scentbird selections. Um, another perk for actually paying the extra $10 for the premium fee is that you receive a black atomizer in, in contrast to the gray atomizer. This, I'm trying to get it out of the, this is the actual satchel that it comes in. This is the gray atomizer, the standard. And I like the black because it's very sleek and um, I have a lot of black decor and a lot of black purses. So I just think it goes great with um, keeping up with the seamless uh, standards of matching, if you will. So another uh, excellent perk is that you receive a 15% off coupon for you to purchase a full size bottle in tandem with the Saks Fifth Avenue collection. So it's not 15% off of a sample, the 0.27 ounce vials. It's the full price um, bottle. So if you find something that you like and you want the full size bottle, then you get 15% off of only Saks Select, not full priced um, standard perfumes or colognes for that matter. So along with the Saks Fifth Avenue um, brands that I mentioned before, Tiziana Terenzi is also under that brand. And Tiziana Terenzi was established in 1968 in Italy. And they have a total of five products on the actual Scentbird site for you to select from. And all of them are premium except for one. The first one, <clears throat> is the highest rated at 4.4 and that is Cassiopeia. The second highest rated is Draco and it's rated at 3.9. The third highest rated is Andromeda, the one for which I shall be reviewing is 3.8. The fourth highest rated is 3.6 and that is Kirk. And the lowest rated is the Spirito Fiorentino which is a 3.4 and that one is not premium. So I think I would be interested in trying the Draco, um, but not any of the others, I don't believe. I don't think I'm in line with those scent profiles, but more in line with the Andromeda profiles. Let's get into some of the distinctions as far as ratings. So 38% deemed the fragrance to be strong as opposed to warm, light, sweet, fresh, or powdery. And that really stood out to me because I love a strong, intense scent that is long lasting. 38% also deemed the fragrance to be date night appropriate as opposed to everyday office, party, vacation, or workout appropriate. Now I do love a, a fragrance that is appropriate <laughs> for all occasions. I love a comprehensive anything, really, that's just appropriate for anything. But I can make anything appropriate um, based on what I want it to be appropriate for. So I actually wore this um, as everyday wear and office wear. Um, so it just worked for me in every occasion. But I will say that when I did wear the scent, more a different type of man was drawn to me and almost inclined to be increasingly more gentlemanly. I don't feel like I was wearing anything different than what I usually wear. I was not acting any different than I usually act. So I noticed that the scent did, did reel in and seemed to be alluring to a different stature of man. I would go into descriptions, but I just, I don't really feel like it but let's just say it was a higher caliber gentlemanly man and this goes into the second the third 
um, rating, which is describing whether the scent is sexy, flirty, or mysterious. It states that 25% deem the fragrance to be sexy as opposed to elegant, mysterious, clean, classic, or flirty. Now, the men that were attracted to me seemed to carry themselves in a, it was like a classic, refined type of male. Um, like I said, very gentlemanly. So I don't feel like I was exuding the aura of sensuality. Um, so I don't really agree with the sensual or date night ratings. But I do wonder if the notes play differently with varying pheromone profiles or the way that a woman carries their, their selves can like override the signature of the actual scent. So your signature overrides that scent and as it intermingles it changes the actual chemistry of the scent and therefore there are grave nuances in how you perceive it and others perceive it so yes the fourth distinction is that 50 percent deem the fragrance to be floral as opposed to spicy woody fruity citrusy or aquatic now there are undertones of florality, if you will, in the form of damask rose, but I do feel as though there's a spiciness and aquatic and ozonic essence that overpowers the floral nature. Um, so I don't really agree with that. 41% deem this fragrance to be appropriate for autumn as opposed to winter, spring, or summer. I can't agree with that, but I can also envision wearing it in the winter because it's it has a warmth to it um, that really aligns with the contrast of the the cold and aligns with the similarity of the coziness of autumn. And autumn is my all-time favorite season. I was born in autumn and I am an autumnal lover. The last distinction is that 42% deem the fragrance to have a complexity that is intense as opposed to being refined or easygoing. I can't agree with that because the complexity dwells in the fact that the fragrance develops over time and you can sense all of the notes arising and shining in their own timing yet still complementing and aligning with each other in a very divine way so the notes include it's included on this um description that was um, provided with me in the actual box you may scan the qr code if you like if it translate via the actual video so i'll still leave it up there but the first note is amber and the amber note accord is resinous in nature it is not quite sweet and not quite spicy but something in between is it is exceedingly warm exceedingly sensual and it's perfect for the gourmand lovers. So it has a, a decadently sweet undertone of spice that is perfect for those who adore indulging in that type of scent. The second nerd, the second nerd, the second note is the bergamot. I was mixing note with bergamot. I was in the future already, you know what I mean? Um, the second note is bergamot. This is a sheer dry citrusy essence and it's very popular in parfums and colognes and it is actually a Mediterranean fruit that is grown mainly in Calabria, Italy and its aroma and taste is slightly betwixt a grapefruit and an orange. It supposedly blends well and is highly versatile very sophisticated in its essence and it's great for those who enjoy a citrusy flair amidst their fragrance 
The third note is coconut powder, which really drew me in. I can't say I've ever known of a scent that had coconut powder. Um, and I just felt, it felt like it would smell like a um, nutty musk. Um, like a musk with a very soft essence, like kind of like uh, Donna Karen's cashmere. It, it kind of seems like it would smell like a sheer cashmere with a slight nutty undertone, which it does. Um, even though there's multitudinous layers, I can sense that cashmere essence. So the coconut powder essence is more of a tropical, fruity, nutty, sweet vanilla with milky nuances. It's also very versatile, like the bergamot. The bergamot. It's also very versatile, like the bergamot. And it can be experienced as either carefree or sensual, depending upon the specific aromatic blend. The, are we in the fifth? I believe we're in the, the fifth fragrance note is the damask rose, which can be described as exceedingly flowery and powdery. And it has a highly fresh and feminine aroma. So that's a great balance with the bergamot and the the gourmand amber notes and the last note is ebony which i feel is similar and akin to the actual amber here's a picture of the ebony we can see right here and ebony is also a gourmand scent it is undeniably decadent with dimensions of depth it is warm with peppery wood tones that are accompanied by saccharine essence so if I could describe the actual essence of the scent, I would say that it embodies the quintessential classic scent, that of a refined pearl. So we know that a pearl doesn't actually have a scent, but if I could encapsulate what I feel that is emanating from the actual scent, it would be this vision of a pearl in my mind's eye and how this would actually carry a sophisticated classic refined scent so it vividly opens up with exquisite essence of ebony while simultaneously introducing you to the alluring scent of amber silky soft notes of coconut powder and delicate notes of damask rose soon encapsulates thy aura with an endearing embrace lastly the bergamot exists as andromeda's sheer citrusy center with which additional aspects of the actual scent completely surrender and settles seamlessly into the actual citrusy bergamot center this bergamot also offers an aquatic dimension that further develops into this quintessential pearl-esque fragrance so it's very refined and classic in my um opinion and in my mind's eye, it definitely is resemblant of a fresh pearl, freshly adorned on the skin and perfectly curated for the feminine refined essence. And as far as their actual Andromeda description, Andromeda is inspired by the blossoming La Fierita, which occurs once a year in the Italian countryside near the Terenzi family residence. Appearing betwixt May and June in the Sibillini Mountains in Italy, La Fiorita is the flowering of the most rare and beautiful blossoms, creating an intoxicating carpet of nature. And although the description didn't hint upon the actual origins of the Andromeda Galaxy, or anything of the sort that's initially what I thought of when I saw the name without even looking at the description so I'm going to go into the origins of um, the name Andromeda so Andromeda is a a barred spiral galaxy 
It's also known as Miser 31 M31 NGC 224 and was originally named the Andromeda Nebula. Andromeda is approximately 2.5 million light years from Earth and the nearest largest galaxy to the Milky Way. And as far as the origins of its name, its name stems from Princess Andromeda, of whom was the heir of King Cepheus and Queen Cassiope. Cassiope? Cassiope. And apparently Poseidon sent a sea monster to the area, the kingdom of Ethiopia. And the only thing that would satiate the sea monster's desires was that of the sacrifice of Princess Andromeda. So they ended up chaining the Princess Andromeda to a rock so that the sea monster may indulge in her vessel. And it stated that, what is his name? That Perseus who slayed Medusa and was the son of Zeus flew by on a Pegasus, which is a winged horse and saved Princess Andromeda. He fell in love with her and was interested in marrying her and he asked King Cepheus for her hand in marriage. He agreed. They ended up having a, a wedding celebration, a wedding dinner. And it stated that the princess was actually already claimed by her uncle. And he attempted to claim her at the wedding dinner. And uh, what is his name again? I keep forgetting. And Perseus ended up stopping him from claiming her and utilizing Medusa's head to turn him into stone so that he can move forth with his with the newly saved love of his life. So those are the origins of the actual name of the Andromeda galaxy. So I find that interesting that they didn't mention anything of the sort in that description, but creation is a open-ended thing and um, you find the connection points and what you find the connection points based on your perception so that is what that is now as far as the astrological olfactory profiling Sitbird uh, provided a link uh, via the via the coupon that they gave me as far as receiving 15% off of the full priced um, actual bottle of a Saks Fifth Avenue parfum, there was a link at the bottom and I pressed it and it showed me a multitude of scents that were supposedly in alignment with one's astrological sign. So we know one's astrological sign is in alignment with various personality distinctions. So if it's in line with pers uh, certain personality distinctions, then it can be aligned with certain signature scents that you may be drawn to. So I'm gonna read a little snippet. While there are no rules etched in the stars forever, there are fragrant cues based on your inherent disposition that can help you find your signature scent. For instance, for instance, nature-based fragrances will align more with earth signs, Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn, and aquatic notes will attract water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Light florals balanced with woody accents will sit well with air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, whereas the fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, will prefer flamboyant, upbeat, and warm fragrances. Now I do have a mild disclaimer. I always take all information with a grain of salt and I've never been completely in alignment with horoscopes or zodiac, but I can find truth or an underlying understanding from various viewpoints 
So I don't completely write things off, but I don't completely and wholeheartedly believe in anything because there's so many multitudinous layers and dimensions and so many nuances in life that can shift um, someone's disposition. Um, there's also various moods and transitions that we go through. And I know that some of those are supposedly related to various transits um, and the actual constellations and things of that sort. But I do think that we should always take everything with a grain of salt, yet still be open to seeing varying perspectives so that we can gain a comprehensive panoramic view and understanding of whatever it is that we are attempting to understand and the greatest thing to understand is thyself and the deeper we come to understand thyself is directly reflected onto how we come to understand the reflective world around us so when i do think about zodiacs there is this analogy that just randomly came into my mind when i was tussling with um whether i actually found that it had any bearing in the actual pro personality profile of an individual and that's that when i think of various fruits and how various fruits are um cultivated in various seasons and have very specific and distinctive qualities um it gets me to thinking that just like various fruits are bore in various seasons and they have various traits so too can individuals be born in various seasons or in alignment with various constellations have traits that are similar in nature to the overarching concept of said constellation so when i think about it in that light it bears more weight to me rationally and logically but I also always give way to the varying nuances and how we were raised and how our perceptions have shifted in accordance with various experiences that we've had. Um, because I find that I resonate with more than one um, constellation, but not more than three. Um, so I, I'm, not, I'm not that varied of a being, but because uh, I'm pretty much distinct and know who I am and how I am and why I am. So with all that said, let's get into it. So Aries is March 21st through April 19th. And this astrological description in its simplicity is that these individuals are bold and ambitious and they fall under the fire signs. Since Aries is ruled by Mars, the color red is associated with it, indicating fire and energy and inherently confident beings. This strong and independent fire sign is aligned with warm, woody, amber fragrances that have a refreshing top note of citrus and um, other enlivening zesty scents. As far as Taurus, they are an earth sign. This is between April 20th and May 20th. They are said to be very loyal, yet also hedonistic. Taurus is ruled by Venus and they love all things that are rich and fabulous in their sense and in their essence. While the, the brand recall is important to them in terms of the aesthetic of the actual brand, it's also important for them to be driven and drawn to what's inside of the bottle. So the Taurus being an earth sign is drawn towards rich woody green fragrances. And when buying fragrances, they would align with parfums or colognes that have a sandalwood, cedarwood, or amber base. So woody and almost gourmand-esque scents work well. For Geminis, they are air signs, and this is between May 21st and June 20th. These individuals are said to be spontaneous and playful in their very nature. The Gemini is referred to as the twin signs, so they supposedly embody two strong personalities, and they don't typically gravitate towards one signature scent, 
but instead their fragrance collection is varied. I think I find that to be interesting because a number of fragrance aficionados have a, a variety of scents, but I guess they may all align with certain signature types, um, but apparently the Geminis have more variety and are more experimental and they would choose to pick a fragrance that is both woody and floral at the same time so maybe not specifically those they're stating this but anything maybe that's dual in nature that complements would complement their personality but in all honesty all parfums and colognes have multitude of um notations always more than one so I would have to challenge that notion. Uh, the Cancer is a water sign and it's between June 21st and July 22nd. They're stated to be intuitive and protective. I can attest to being intuitive and protective, so I align with that. My mother is a Cancer and we are essentially best friends and we get along um, swimmingly. My brother is also a Cancer and we get along swimmingly. Um, the Cancer is ruled by the moon. Cancerians are very emotional yet intuitive and while they can often be construed as mild, they can be a force of nature if provoked. Just like water, like waters can seem soothing, especially at low tide, but if there's a wave, if there's a tsunami, I mean, you never know the power until you're aligned with the power that's being forced upon you so for a scent that hooks them in it would be something that's familiar and comforting yet powerful that's me I'm familiar and comforting yet powerful so no wonder I get along with cancers <laughs> uh, they avoid intense experimental notes and go for universally pleasant soft florals or bright citrusy ones and actually my mom does go for um, light floral scents not too intense and my brother, uh, one of his favorite scents is the Versace Eros, and that does have an aquatic scent to it. So there may be something to that. The Leo is a fire sign, um, and that's between July 23rd and August 22nd. These individuals are stated to be vivacious and fiery. The zodiac sign is ruled by the sun and is known for their larger than life aura and their theatrical personalities. Oriental fragrances with intense notes of vanilla, spices, tonka beans, and bursts of citrus works well for them. The Virgo, which is a sign that I feel I align very well with, which I don't believe I've ever dated a Virgo, but I think I should date a Virgo because I've typically dated fire signs and water signs and it hasn't aligned. So, <laughs> but one of my longest relationship was with a water sign, a Pisces, but it wasn't completely harmonious throughout. So. I'm interested in dating an earth sign, someone very grounded and sturdy. And I'm an air sign, by the way. So the Virgo is August 23rd through September 22nd. They are touted to be spiritual and organized. I'm very spiritual and organized myself, so I could relate to the Virgo ways. Um, these are considered to be the perfectionists of the lot. They lead by example and find peace in organization. That sounds like a Libra. They are driven by the earth element and they are intuitively grounded. Virgos find themselves gravitating towards light florals and mossy green fragrances that have a forest vibe. And some of the scents that I saw on the actual Scentbird website were the Hermetica Rose Fire and these included notes of Divana, Rose Absolute, and Violet. There is also the Initial Parfum Privé, Oud for Greatness. I like Oud. Oud is one of my favorite um, notes. And that's a part of the Saks Fifth Collection. And this includes Agar Wood Oil, Lavender Musk, Patchouli, and Saffron. I would try either of those and I would try Virgo, definitely. Maybe I'll try Virgo for Valentine's Day. We'll see, we'll see guys. The next sign is my sign. I mean, we're close to each other. So it's like, so I wonder if signs that are close to one another along the constellations 
may align more in their core values. So I'm a Libra, and that's between September 23rd, 23rd and October 22nd. I was born September 28th. And these individuals are touted to be intellectual and intuitive. If you've looked at any of my videos, that is my core essence that I emanate. Intellectual intuitiveness at its finest. I am a flowy air sign, but I'm also very grounded in who I am. So I have an undertone of earth. I haven't looked into all of my my moon and my, my Venus. Um, actually I have I just don't remember but I do have a link from cafe astrology for you to look up your full astrological profile um, so Librans aspire for the balancing act they want to make the right decisions wise investments and naturally veer more towards fragrances that which are timeless additions to their collection with the Venus influence Librans tend to be romantics and can't resist woody floral citrusy earthy harmonious blends so I can attest to that I do like woody earthy scents I don't really like citrusy florals but citruses and florals are great center notes that help meld all of the dimensions of the notes together and as I mentioned in my description of Andromeda a lot of the notes surrender to the center note to actually allow the others to be more prominent and develop in their own way so I don't like an overpowering citrus and I don't like an overly floral scent because it's a little bit too feminine i like that lovely balance of masculine and feminine with so the prominence of masculinity because of its powerful potent intensity so some of the scents that were under the libran zodiac scent profile was the aqua di parma os mantas that's a part of the sax select and the notes are ambret green mandarin osmanthus patchouli and pink pepper the pink pepper is what stood out to me i love a peppery spicy um, undertone the second one is the veronique gabi le point g and i shall be trying the le point g next in my selection after the velvet fire the harmonist and these notes include cedar wood, iris, leather, and pink pepper. Pink pepper. I definitely want to see how they encapsulate the leather essence, and I want to see so much that I might move up the Veronique Le Point G above the Harmonist Velvet Fire. I'll see. The next one is Scorpio, October 23rd through November 21st. This is a water sign. Although intensely emotional in nature, Scorpios are highly intelligent. Scorpios need perfumes that match their sense of passion and power, which translates to dark woody oud fragrances with a touch of fresh marine every now and then. They're considered to be elusive and mysterious. I also relate to Scorpio, so I relate to those three um, actual zodiac signs which is interesting that they fall along the same lines in the constellation so I wonder if our soul groups if this astrology information is absolute um, if our soul groups tend to be individuals that fall in the like three range like because mine is Virgo Libra Scorpio I'm curious I will look more into that and some fragrances that are aligned with the Scorpio Zodiac in the Sax Select collection is the Goutal Patti Nuit et Confidences. The notes are black pepper, Italian bergamot, Madagascar vanilla, musk, and tonka bean. Another one is Scents of Wood, Plum, and Cognac. And the notes include cinnamon bark, purple plum, rum absolute, and vanilla extract. I may need to change my subscription so that I can get multiple scents at once because a lot of these scents are really enticing me to purchase so and another interesting thing is that I found out that there is a 13th zodiac that's not included in the standard zodiac which is Ophiuchus and that's between November 29th and December 17th so it essentially falls underneath Sagittarius um, but apparently they took out the 13th because the Babylonians wanted there to be an even number of 12 
And this astrological sign is supposedly thoughtful yet cold-blooded. So the cold-blooded seems similar to Scorpio and the thoughtful seems a bit similar to Sagittarius, but I don't know. Um, and they're considered to be a mix of elements and that's late degrees fixed water and early degrees mutable fire. So the Ophiuchus represents the courage and perseverance of fighting against death and people under the Ophiuchus sign can hardly be defeated. Being loyal and steady, they have a strict standard on the good and evils of the universe. In addition, Ophiuchus people have their own ideal and goal and always strive forward to challenges with the strong motivation of tenacity. And these notes that they are supposedly attracted to are black roses, calamus, and pansies. And I believe their actual sign that they um, have the symbol is the serpent bearer. So that's pretty interesting, which sounds similar to Scorpio as far as the dark essence. So there's also Sagittarius, which is November 22nd and December 21st. This is a fire sign. They're considered to be adventurous and curious and to complement their flamboyant and competitive personality, the perfumes that they need need to be playful upbeat and charismatic so fresh citrusy zesty fragrances with a touch of glamorous white flowers and strong woods would appeal to their adventurous streak so it's seeming like a lot of woody floral citrusy is flowing through all of these fragrances so that's a a trend i'm noticing another is capricorn december 21st no december 22nd through January the 19th and um, these are earth signs so these are individuals that are progressive and passionate I can also see myself dating a Capricorn earth sign progressive and passionate is in alignment with um, my core personality traits but it's offbeat with um, what I was stating about our soul family our soulmates being in the similar constellation because this is past um the scorpio libra virgo range um past sagittarius so but it is an earth sign so it would be that counterbalance that would complement my air sign very well so capricorn is symbolized by the mountain goat capricorns are dreamers and doers however their governing trait is that of being so emotionally steady that they can be construed as reclusive and i can be construed as reclusive prominently so that's relatable uh fragrances with warm and solid woods that have a nostalgic essence and have a sense of status would appeal to their olfactory senses quite well there's also aquarius january 20th through february 18th these are air signs and the aquarian aura is often associated with a head in the clouds type of behavior that's also eccentric. They are solution providers, great negotiators, and thrive in leadership roles. Darker perfumes with intense woody amber notes can help them stay grounded so that they can have a refreshing upliftment as they sync with essences that are aligned with their desire to soar. And we also have Pisces, which is February 19th through March 20th. This is a water sign. This is the last sign. They are ten they are they tend to be bold and ambitious. They're symbolized by the fish. They possess a high emotional quotient, which is a positive aspect. And they also are adept at keeping their mystical side hidden under the easy conversations of fantasy-led stories. They love the sea and often are attracted to aquatic scents. Now, I used to date a Pisces, and um, I can say that they are decently emotionally healthy, but I can't agree that they tend, the one that I dated, um, tended to keep his um, spiritual side, um, like the important things like to himself and in a hidden corridor. And um, I think I prefer someone that's more comprehensively upfront and forthcoming about a multitude of things. So that's where the dissonance 
occurred. So in essence, that is my complete explication of the Andromeda Extra de Parfum, as well as my astrological olfactory profiling overview. So if you can relate to the scents, the signature scents, uh, the signature notes that were brought up in the profiling, please comment below. And if you didn't, please also let me know because it's not an absolute um, science, if you will. I wonder if it bears on being a pseudoscience. Um, I haven't looked a lot into astrological science, but I became more intrigued when I saw that scent bird does have that aspect where they do link your astrological aura with signature scents. So that's a fun little aspect that they have on the website. And as I said, I do have links for you to tune in and subscribe, if you will, at a discount. Well, if you decide to, at your will. And um, I thank you kindly for tuning in with me, beautifully beloved beings. And of course, until next time, stay serene.